Hi, and welcome to my guide. Today, we're going to be completing the quest Morning's End Part 2. The quest requirement is Morning's End Part 1, and there are no stat requirements. I just need it. Full Mourner. If you've lost your Full Mourner outfit, be sure to check your POH armor case, and if it's not in there, then rewatch about a fourth of my Morning's End Part 1 guide how to easily reobtain this outfit. Then also a rope and a chisel. For the recommended items, we basically have to complete 6 light puzzles, whilst being attacked by monsters with a max hit of 13, but they only have 15 HP. So I suggest you to bring some gear that both reduces your weight to close to zero, while also having high prayer bonus. I'm gonna be using a dragon mace as a weapon to maybe just quickly kill a monster with just 15 HP, and a mace has a plus 5 prayer boost, which is just one less to a god crozier. The biggest benefit is most definitely bringing a Ring of Endurance. This will save you 4 empty inventory slots, which will be very helpful during this quest. But since I don't want to and even can't afford to buy a Ring of Endurance, I'm just gonna be replacing this with a Explorer's Ring. Hello, future me here. In this guide, I've brought 5 prayer and 4 stamina potions, because those amounts are exactly one more than the amount that I've used in my previous guide. Now, I did not need as many at all, and ended up only using two potions of each. So I suggest you to simply bring three of each, and I think that should be more than enough. And I would suggest you to bring also four to five summer pies. But since I don't want to buy any summer pies from another player, I'm gonna replace in those summer pies with some karam ones, and a agility potion, since I'm quite afraid of that one agility obstacle in the middle of this quest. What might also be helpful is to bring along some purple sweets, as they both recharge your run energy by 10%, while also healing you between 1 and 3 HP, and also are stackable. Then lastly, about 2 empty inventory slots, as well as a death or Catalytic Talisman or Tiara. The only way to get a Death Talisman before the completion of Morning's End Part 2 is by killing Dark Beasts, which require level 90 Slayer. And the only way to get a Catalytic Talisman is by doing Guardians of the Rift and hoping for a 1 in 200 drop of that rare Talisman. If you do not own any of those two Talismans, then you will need to collect 50 random junk items. For the teleports, if you own a death or catalytic talisman, then you'll just need two teleports to Westerdoin and two teleports to Lecha. So make sure that your teleport crystal has at least two charges while you're already in Lecha. If you have less than two charges in Lecha, then go outside of Lecha and go speak to Elenet with 750 coins in your inventory to recharge your amulet. If you do not own a Death or Catalytic Talisman or Tiara, then you'll need to gather these 50 random items which are gathered all over the game. So there are also multiple ways how to obtain these items. But for me, I'm going to be using these teleports. All right, that was a quite long one, I think. Let's start the quest by going to Lecce and speaking with Arian 1. Select option 1 to start the quest. Next, let's teleport to Westerdorn and let's head into the Mourner's headquarters in the most northeastern building. Just like in the Mourner's End Part 1 quest as well as the Biohazard quest. Let's head into the Mourner's headquarters, be sure to equip Full Mourner and then head downstairs in the northwestern corner and let's go into the corner room to speak to the head mourner, Asilt. Let's talk to Asilt and he will give you a new key which can lead you into the Temple of Light. Let's investigate what happened to one of the dick teams by going through the western door into the room with the train cart tracks. And let's continue running west. Keep running west until we head into the Temple of Light. 
if a dark beast is coming towards you, then be sure to use protect from ranged, not use protect from melee, not ranged, and keep running west. Keep running west until you see a cutscene of some dead mourners. We will need to search the guard. Usually it is the most northern guard. This one should have a journal. Yes, read it, close it, and then continue heading west. Use protect from Lee, because here are already the annoying shadows. Let's go upstairs. Let's first go south. Then at the crossroad, go west. Then once again, go south. And here you'll find a low wall. Climb over. This is a safe zone. And this is a room with a hole in there. Go stand on the other side and use your rope on the rock. Next, let's climb over the low wall again. And continue going south, then east. And then on your minimap, you should find a ladder sign. Go to the top floor, then go north. Maybe equip your weight reducing clothing. I'm a bit late on that. Climb down the stairs just a bit north, then go up some stairs just a bit north, then continue going east. Keep going east and there you'll find a dark crystal. Use your chisel on it and then let's make our way back to Alecha to deliver this to Arianwine. Let's talk to Arianwine. And what we will now need to do is to prepare to complete those six light puzzles while being attacked by those level 73 shadows with a max hit of 13 and a HP level of 15. Now to save on some prayer points, I'm going to quickly go upstairs, use the Lecha prayer altar, praying to Saren. And then I'm going to the bank to prepare for the light puzzle. Here at the bank, be sure that you have your newly made crystal. Keep that. You do not need your chisel anymore. Also, you may drop the journal as well as the new key. Be sure to have your full mortar outfit. Hello, future me here. In this guide, I've brought five prayer and four stamina potions, because those amounts are exactly one more than the amount that I've used in my previous guide. Now, I did not need as many at all, and ended up only using two potions of each. So I suggest you to simply bring three of each and I think that should be more than enough. And I would suggest you to bring also four to five summer pies. But since I don't want to buy any summer pies from another player, I'm gonna replace in those summer pies with some Karam ones and a agility potion since I'm quite afraid of that one agility obstacle in the middle of this quest. Then for the teleports, one teleport back to Lecce to complete our quest if you have a death or catalytic talisman or tiara. Then maybe also one pure essence might be very helpful to complete a Ardoin hard diary task if you have 65 runecrafting or higher. Okay, I think I am ready. Let's go blast off into the Temple of Light. Teleport to West Ardoin, and let's head back to Asilt. And use that empty inventory slot from the West Ardoin teleport to grab another new key. Which is just searchable off his desk. If you've banked that key, then be sure to grab that key. Do not store everything in your bank. Just grab a new key from the desk. And let's head back into the Temple of Light. Just like in my old guide, I'm just going to be dropping my full mortar outfit. Now only do this if you're going to be completing all six puzzles in one sitting. 
No teleporting out. That will not reset your puzzles. Just make sure that you have enough supplies to last you those six light puzzles, which should take about half an hour to 40 minutes. Whilst being attacked off combat 73 monsters with a max hit of 13. Also, this reduces my weight to negative, making my run energy last the longest. If you're not sure if your supplies will last you, you could also just pick up your top and trousers because these will require the longest time to reobtain. But I'm feeling pretty confident and I'm just heading west back into the Temple of Light. And this time I am using Protect from Elite for the Dark Beasts. Go away. Oh. Bastard. We can attack from far. Keep heading into the Temple of Light and go upstairs. From the upstairs, let's go just directly east. Turn off your Protect Family, this is a safe zone and also has on the eastern wall a crystal dispenser. Click on it, collect the crystal dispenser and select option 1 twice. Pull the lever, yes reset and pull it, then select option 3, take everything. You will get 4 hand mirrors and a yellow crystal. First, let's use the first hand mirror next to us and let's rotate the mirror so the light goes north. Next, use Protect from Lee maybe and use a second mirror to stand on the northern or the southern tile. Use your mirror on the next pillar and make the light go west. Next pillar, make the light go south. Next pillar, make the light turn yellow by inserting a yellow crystal. Next pillar, going south, make the light go east. Once you've done that, the fun part starts as we will need to climb the wall support 9 times successfully to be able to cross the cap. Now before your first attempt, to increase your chances on holding on, eat a slice of summer pie or drink a dose of an agility potion as every agility level matters. At level 56, you only have a 4% chance of holding on to the end. At level 70, this is increased to about 18%, at level 80, about 39%, and only at level 91, you have a 100% chance of making it across all the way. If you fall down, then simply follow the path going west, north, then back east, back to the staircase, to the entrance of the Temple of Light, then run back to the gap, and try once again. Do this until you've successfully crossed this gap. Once you've finally crossed the wall support, let's go through the light door and you'll find your first chest. Open it. Once we have the two hand mirrors and the cyan crystal, let's go through the light door, climb the wall support again, and return to the crystal dispenser to reset this light puzzle. And this was puzzle one out of six. If you fell down, then you will need to run west. Keep going west until you're able to go north. Quickly turn on Protect from Melee maybe. Then go north until you can go east. Continue east until you can't go any further. Then go back north and here you are at the entrance. Once we have our cyan crystal and two additional mirrors, Let's collect the Crystal Dispenser. Select option 1 twice to reset the puzzle and then select option 3 to take everything. To start off, let's move the light north once again. Next, let's go north again and use a hand mirror on the next pillar and redirect the light going west. Next, use a cyan crystal on the next pillar. Then go to the next pillar, use a hand pair on it and direct the light going north. 
Then the next pillar, use another hand mirror and direct the light going east. Then use your yellow crystal on it to make it green. And then go to the western magenta light door. Go through it and open the next chest. To find two more mirrors. And that is already puzzle two out of six completed. Let's keep going. Let's exit the light door and let's go to the first pillar. Let's take out that yellow crystal. And let's insert a mirror so that the light gets redirected upwards. You should be able to visually see the light coming out of the pillar. Once it does, go up the ladder just next to you. And in that pillar next to you on the top floor, put in another mirror and redirect the light going west. Next, let's go back down and let's go south. We will now need to go all the way south back to the handholds. But next to the handholds, there will be another ladder. Just like when you've just entered this place for the very first time. Or maybe take the staircase, which is just next to the ladder. Doesn't matter which one you take. Just go to the top floor. And from there, go north. Let's climb down and up the double staircase to go to the northern section of the top floor. And from there, go west. Go through the small corridor. There will be two, just like in the Agility Primhaven Arena, some uh, woodwork traps. In the northwestern corner, let's use another mirror on the Pillar of Light and let's make the light go down. If you get attacked by a shade, be sure to stand on the northern or the southern tile next to the pillar. So if the shade is next to the pillar, it will not be able to attack you anymore. The eastern side of the mirror is up while the western side is down. This will make the light go down. Once you have this, let's make our way back to the bottom floor. So, passing through the woodwork machinery. Then go back through the double staircase, keep going south. Then take any of the two staircases back to level 2. Then go north. Take the stairs near the crystal dispenser to go back to level 1. And from there, go north and continue the path to the northwestern room. And there we'll find the chest to complete puzzle 3 out of 6. Go through the light barrier. Next, inside of the pillar there will be a mirror. Rotate the mirror so it goes south. Go through the southern light room. Follow the path to the chest. And you will get two more mirrors and a fractured crystal. Next, let's exit this room and let's return to the crystal dispenser. Let's turn the light back to the other side, to the other light doors that we're able to go through. And let's make our way back upstairs to the middle floor. At the middle floor, let's go north. Do not reset the puzzle. Go north to where we've put the cyan crystal. Let's take out the cyan crystal and insert the yellow crystal. Next, go back south. And let's go back to the top floor and the northwestern room. So keep going south. Use the staircase. Any or the ladder, doesn't matter. Then go north to the double staircase. And from the double staircase, go directly west and go through the sawmill operating machine once again. And this time, there will be a new colored light going into that pillar of light. Currently, it is going down, which we have put there 
during puzzle 3. But for puzzle 4, we will need to rotate this mirror so the red light goes south. Next, continue going south to the southwestern corner of this temple. In the most southwestern pillar, we will need to insert another mirror so the light is redirected going down. So the northern side will need to go up and the southern side will need to go down. Yes, that's it. From there, go through the sawmills machinery once again and let's return to level 2. At level 2, go west to where we've put that rope. Let's climb down the low wall. And climb down the rope. Climb down the rope, go west, and there you should find the completion of puzzle 4 out of 6. Let's open the chest to get some more stuff. A blue crystal. And let's go back the way we came from, through the light door and climbing up the rope. Climb over the low wall and this time for puzzle 5 and for puzzle 6, we will sadly enough have to reset the puzzle. So let's go back to the main staircase to go from level 1 to level 2 and let's collect the crystal dispenser. Select option 1 twice to pull it to reset the puzzle and then take everything. Number 3. Apparently there are 5 items left in the tray. Make sure that you have all the items that are currently in the tray. If you've brought summer pies, then... We'll still need to cross those handholds one more time. We only have two more puzzles to go, so if you don't mind it, you could also drop a stamina and a prayer potion. Once you have your 10 mirrors, as well as your 4 crystals, well 5, the newly made one, let's do puzzle 1 over again. Let's use a mirror, make it go north, maybe pick up some more food, and let's go back north. Make the light redirect it going west or left. Then make the light go south. Next, follow it south and use a yellow crystal in the next pillar. Then follow the yellow light going south. And use a mirror on the next pillar and direct the light going east. And once again, let's go over some handholds. So once again, I'm just going to be drinking a agility potion or eating a summer pie and just hope for the best. Oh my god, really? 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 Nice! Let's go through the blue light door and let's insert the blue crystal inside of the pillar. Next, exit and go back on the wall support and we'll need to take out the mirror out of the previous pillar. Just across the handholds. If you fell down, then just make your way back upstairs and go back to the most southern pillar. Let's remove mirror, the second button. Next, go north. You may leave the yellow crystal in the next pillar. Keep going north to the light directing pillar going south. We will need to direct the light going upwards this time. So make the light go up. And next, let's go south and let's go back to the top floor. Using either the staircase or the ladder. I always use a staircase. Next, let's go north to the double staircase and cross both of them. Go down 
go up, then go a bit east, and they'll find where the light should go into. Let's place a mirror in there and make the light go south. Then go back to the double staircase. Go down, go up. And then go to the next pillar. Use a fractured crystal on it. Next, follow the light west. And use your mirror in the next pillar and make it go down. So the eastern side will need to go up and the western side will need to be down. This one. Next, let's go back to the fractured crystal and follow the light going south. Next, insert a mirror, redirect the light going east. Bollocks. Then follow the light going east. And use another mirror on the next pillar and make the light go down. So this time the western side needs to be up and the eastern side needs to face down. And we're almost done with Light Maze 5 out of 6. Let's go back west and climb down the ladder on the southern wall to go back to the middle floor. And from there let's run north back to the crystal dispenser and go down the staircase to go to the ground floor. When there, go south and then pass two pillars running west. The pillar in the corner will have some green light coming into it. Place a mirror into it and then direct the green light southward. Then follow the green light south to the next pillar and redirect the light going east. Continue east and go through the light door, the magenta light door. Use our final hand mirror to redirect the blue light, going north, go through the yellow light door to complete puzzle 5 out of 6. And we get 3 more mirrors and another fractured crystal. Once we have this, let's return back to the middle floor to reset puzzle 5. We just have one more puzzle to go, which gives us access to the death altar pull the lever yes yes and then take everything number three four items left eh but you only need to boost your agility during puzzle 1 and 5. So I don't need my agility potion anymore. Try to manage your inventory. Maybe drop a prayer or stamina potion. Since we only have one more puzzle to go. Right. If you really are tight on space. Let's redirect the light going north. Pick up some food if you really want to. Use another hand mirror on the next pillar. But this time we will need to rotate it so that the light goes down. So the big part of the mirror is the southern part and the small one is the northern part. Let's go back to the collecting uh, crystal. Maybe pick up some food but I don't really need to. Let's go back downstairs. Let's go back to the bottom level. Then go north. Use a hand mirror on the next pillar. Redirect the light going west. Then follow the light and use the fractured crystal with a light left side and a dark right side then follow the light going north use a hand mirror on where the light goes into and make the light go upwards next we're done here let's go back to the middle floor and on the middle floor let's go to the northern side to where we've just made that light go to And not redirect that light, but use a yellow crystal on that pillar. Then climb up the ladder just up north. And then redirect that light using a hand mirror and make it go west. 
Next, let's climb back down and let's go back to the handholds where there is the staircase and the ladder going to the other side of the third floor. Climb up the staircase, let's go back north, use the double staircase, and let's return to the sawmill operating agility obstacle thingy on the western side. Let's once again go to the most northwestern pillar. There will be a red light going into that pillar. We will need to insert a mirror in there and redirect the light going south. Next, follow the light to the next pillar. Put a mirror in there and redirect the light going east. That is the red light. Let's go through. Let's go a bit south. Go through the sawmill operating machine of the southwestern side. And let's return to the bottom floor. To get to the bottom floor, let's use a ladder or a staircase on the southern side. Then go back up north and climb down the staircase next to the crystal dispenser. From there, go south. And then go to the pillar just located just a bit southwest. Use your second fractured crystal on it. Then go east to the eastern pillar, insert a hand mirror and make the light go up. Next, go back west to the next pillar and also make this light go up. Next, let's go back upstairs. We are completely done with the lowest level. Let's go back to the middle floor. Then go south and let's return to the top floor. On the top floor, let's go to the first pillar that we see. Use a hand mirror on it and redirect the light, the green light, going west. Next, go east. Pass a pillar of light and go to the most eastern pillar. Use a mirror on it and redirect the light going west. Next, follow the light and use your hand mirror on the next pillar and redirect the light going north. Next, climb down and up the double staircase. Use your lost hand mirror on the next pillar and make the light go west. Follow the light and use your blue crystal on the next pillar. Then let's go down the double staircase, but do not go back up. And next to you there will be a staircase going west. Go down. And we are done. We have just opened up this light door. Go through. Rotate the mirror in the pillar next to you. So it goes to the western side. And this will be the final light to open up the final light door. Go through it. And you'll see a short cutscene. Oh. I can't see shit. Hello? Congratulations, you have completed Morning's End Part 2, kind of. We have just completed all six light puzzles. Now the path splits for the people that have a death or catalytic talisman and the people that do not. First, for the people that do have a death or catalytic talisman. With our death talisman, let's complete this quest. Use it on the mysterious runes. If you've brought a pure essence with 65 runecraft, let's craft rune. To complete a hard diary task, 
Then also use your newly made crystal on the altar. And let's exit. Let's go through the light barrier, head east, rotate the mirror so you're able to exit through the eastern light door. Go up, then go up north, then go east. Just like at the start of the quest, go east, go to the dark crystal, just a bit south. Use the newly made crystal on the dark crystal to replace it. And let's teleport to Lecce to complete our quest. Let's talk to Arinwine. And congratulations, you have completed Morning's End Part 2. You are awarded with 60,000 agility experience, access to the Death Altar, which you can use via Abyss Runecrafting and Guardians of the Rift, access to Dark Beasts and their Slayer tasks, if you have 90 or higher Slayer, access into the Temple of Light, but after the quest, it requires the Crystal Trinket in your inventory to be able to regain access into the Temple of Light. If you do not wish to ever enter the Temple of Light again, you may simply drop it or destroy it. Going to the Death Altar does not require this trinket in your inventory. So if you're doing Guardians of the Rift or Abyss Runecrafting, you're free to just destroy this trinket. And finally, you're now also able to receive Death Talismans from the Guardians of the Rift Rewards Guardian, as well as you're now able to spend your reward points on Death Talismans, if you want to. And lastly, you have now also completed a quest requirement for Song of the Elves. And this was my guide, how to complete Morning's End Part 2. Hopefully it has helped. Subscribe, rate, and comment. Okay, thanks, bye. If you do not want to get a Catalytic Talisman from Guardians of the Rift, or you do not want to buy a Death Talisman of another player, then, sadly enough, you will have to complete the entire supplies list which Thorgal just gave to us. So, to start, I would like to pass through the light door and let's go west and redirect the mirror so it goes back to that light blue door. So that door is open once again. Next, I would like to use my home teleport and let's start to gather these 50 items. For those that do have a Light and Death Talisman, well, you basically just need to go to the Death Altar, use the newly made crystal on it, replace the Dark Crystal with the Light Crystal, and then talk to Erwin to complete your quest. For us, we, uh, we, we just need to do Part 2 of Morning's End Part 2. Once we are here at the bank, we may deposit everything and only bring your weight reducing clothing. You may destroy the cyan crystal. Bring your most weight reducing clothing, a bank teleport, a weapon and a ender dragon fire shield to kill a baby blue dragon and then also some teleport with some coins. I think like 2000 will most definitely be enough. One teleport to East Ardoin. One teleport to an outpost. One teleport to Ferox Enclave to restore our stats. I don't need the Explorer's Ring anymore. One teleport to Taverly. I'm going to be using a hot air balloon. One teleport to Lecce. Teleport Crystal. One teleport to Camp Torm, which is the dwarven city inside of Varlamore. And then one teleport to any bank. Okay. To start in the Colonel Master chest, let's right click and buy food. Let's buy the following items. A pot of flour, a cake tin, an egg, a bucket of milk, a pie dish, some cheese, and that is it. Let's also quickly go to the southwestern corner and there should find some leather boots. Pick those up and then go back to the bank to deposit all of this stuff. To save some inventory. Right, let's now right click on the bank chest, buy food. And let's buy one bucket and use the bucket on the sink to fill it up with water. And let's now make our way to Camp Torum.
Here at Camp Torm, next to you, they'll find a pickaxe shop. Let's buy an iron pickaxe. Then, next to you, you should also find a jewelry stall. Let's trade Konara, buy a gold ring. Then also next to you, let's go to the general store. And in the general store, we can buy a spade. And that is it, what I wanted to buy in Camp Torum. Let's now make our way to East Ardoin. And let's go south to the fur stall. Let's trade the fur trader. And let's buy one bear fur. Let's go north once we have that. And let's steal two silk from the silk stall. Sadly enough, the silk trader does not have a trade option. So yeah, we'll have to train some thieving. Once we have two pieces of silk, with our iron pickaxe, we can go into the northeastern blue checkered building and teleport with Wizard Comparty to the Essence Mine. Mine 2, pure essence. Well, you only need one for the quest, but you need a second one if you have above 65 runecrafting and you want to complete your hard diary or doing task. Once we have these, let's return back to Ardoin and let's go west to the general store or the adventuring store of Ardoin. At the adventuring store, let's trade any of the two NPCs and let's buy a bunch of items. We will need a knife, a vial of water, an iron axe, a cooked meat, a tinderbox and a ball of wool. Also a rope, don't forget the rope. Next, let's head north and go to the bank because I forgot my stamina potion. Also, north of the bank, they'll find a farming store. From him, we will need to buy an empty sack. And north of the farming store, they'll find a ranging guild. Your list will contain a ticket. But that ticket will be random for everyone. It will either be an archery ticket from the ranging guild north of Ardoin, either a agility arena ticket, from Brimhaven, or the Castle Wars ticket from, well, west of Yanil Castle Wars. If you check your list and there is a different ticket from an archery ticket, then you can skip this part. I'm just going to quickly grab my archery ticket by going to the competition judge. Yes, 200 GP. Give me a bow and arrow, please. Are you serious? You're not even providing me with a bow. I think I should be able to trade this from the armor salesman, maybe? No, bow and arrow guy. Give me a bow. Equip your bow and arrows. Fire at the target from behind the haystacks. Do this 10 times until you ran out of arrows. Close the interface every single time. This is the old school way to train your ranged without gaining any hit point experience. Go back to the competition judge and you'll get some archery tickets. Good. I'm gonna drop the bow. 
Next, let's make our way to the outpost, located west of Westerdoin, and let's go kill another Mona for another Mona outfit. Just like in the Morning's End Part 1 quest. We already have all the items to restore the bloody top and the shredded trousers, so doesn't matter that much. Pidey, spec, kill the level 11, hopefully in one go. I still... Damn. Okay. Pick up all six items. Uh, can I equip something? No, I do not. So I'm gonna be just dropping my coins. I don't also need any Necklace of Passage anymore, but whatever. Next, once you have your full mortar, let's make our way to Ferox Enclave to restore our stats as well as go to the bank. I'm going through the free-for-all portal and afterwards to the bank. Let's deposit the mortar outfit, the gloves, the boots, the cape and the gas mask. Also happen to get some archery tickets, deposit those as well. Also deposit your second pure essence, you only need one for the list. And let's grab a anti-dragon fire shield and a weapon to kill a baby blue dragon. Next, be sure to also bring the following teleports. One to Taverly, one to Lecha and one to any bank of your liking. Next, at the bank, be sure to also read your item list and see what kind of key that you need. The key is also random for everyone. You will either need a door key from Taverly or a jail key or a dusty key from the Taverly dungeon. Once you know what kind of key you need, you may deposit your item list. Now with a little bit more in the inventory space, let's make our way to Taverly and let's go clean up this bloody mortar top. Oh yeah, I have locks in my lock storage, don't I? That's why I never use it. Use that on that. Use the basket. Go to Tavale. Steal the soap from Tajit. And then use the soap on the bloody murder top with a bucket of water in your inventory to clean it up. Steal the soap. Say yes. Yes. Use soap top. Drop the soap, drop the bucket. Now it is time to get our key. There's a 33% chance that you have a door key. If you have that, go north and let's go to the entrance of the witch's house. And search the plant pot next to the entrance of the witch's house and that will be your door key. But I don't have a door key so I'm gonna be dropping it. For everyone, let's make our way into the Taverly dungeon and let's go through the tunnel, or if you have 70 agility, go through the pipe and kill a baby blue dragon. For the other 66% of us, if you do not have a door key on your list, but instead a dusty key or a jail key, let's go through the gate, which apparently does not require a dusty key. It does require a dusty key just to open it from the eastern side, but not from the western side apparently. But let's go through the gate and let's go south to the Black Knight hideout, where, yeah, if you've completed the... Falador Elite Diary task of killing 1,300 Black Knights. Well, you know where that place is.
passing the Hill Giants, passing the first room of the Black Knights, go east, and there I'll find a Jailer. If you have a Jail Key or a Dusty Key, simply kill the Comet 47, Jailer for a Jail Key. If you happen to have a dusty key, then use the jail key on the southern door. And let's talk to Verlag the Explorer, select option 1, and trade the jail key for a dusty key. Select option 1 once again, and he doesn't even need the jail key apparently. Next, let's make our way to Lecce. In Lecce, let's go to the general store and let's buy some stuff. We will need a hammer. I lost my coins, god damn it. Alright, with some coins in your inventory, let's trade the Uda from the general store. Let's buy a hammer, some shears and a chisel. Next, let's go west. This feels really similar to Morning's End Part 1. Let's trade Otoen, the seamstress. Let's buy a needle and a thread. Also talk to her and select option 3. Can you mend my trousers once again? Next, let's go south. And let's go to the bank to prepare to deliver our first inventory of random junk items. But first, near the bank there is a ladder. Go up to the Food store. There, let's trade get in and buy a jug of wine. Go back downstairs and let's go to the bank and let's prepare to go back to Thurgol at the death altar in the Temple of Light. But since I'm already in Lecce, I think I'm just going through the underground pass and using the back door. Also, before we're leaving, make sure that you have at least one teleport use left on your teleport crystal. If it has absolutely nothing left, then bring 750 coins to the western side outside of Lecce to the two quest start and talk to Elinata. She spawns there for 5 minutes every 5 minutes and she will re-enchant this for 750 coins at the very least. Okay, we no longer need our anti-dragon fire shield as well as our coins as well as our mortar top and trousers. Deposit those items. And let's grab the following items. The leather boots, the... Oh. The leather boots, the bucket of milk, the cheese, cake tin, egg, and pie dish. Hello, future me here, again. I forgot that I had a necklace of passage and an empty sack in my inventory. So if you deposit both of those, you can replace those two items with one additional flax that you can pick just outside the bank. And one stamina potion. Also, deposit your teleport crystal with at least one use. Then drink a antidote. So we are immune for at least a couple of minutes. Then also bring a stamina potion. And let's go deliver the first 27 items out of 50. So, let's exit Lecce. The only way to exit Lecce is by passing the tree uh, west of Lecce. Use Predator from Lee, and then go through or step over the tripwire, passing the dire wolves. Hopefully you do not get hit. If you do, well, we drank an antidote. Then go through the dense forest just a bit more west. Do this three times. Then go straight north. They'll find a leaf trap. Go jump over it. Click on the click box closest to your character. And then just simply follow the path east to the back exit of the underground path. There, continue going east and into the Well of Voyage. Then we are in Ivan's room, temple room, I think. What we'll now need to do is to go and jump some bridges. We will either need to successfully jump six, 
if you take the northern path. But what is more helpful is to just simply keep jumping until you unsuccessfully jump down. But if you have a low agility level, you might want to at keep attempting crossing bridges until you fail and then you end up in the bottom layer where we will need to go. But if you have a relatively decent agility level, let's say something above 70, just cross these bridges. So just successfully cross six bridges and then climb down the northwestern stairs to the bottom level and from there go straight south. The bottom level is much smaller than the top level. Taking the northwestern stairs is much more efficient since you just need to cross the bottom level instead of crossing the top level, which is much bigger. Behind the building with the anvil sign, let's descend that cave and we'll end up here at the Temple of Light. Let's talk to Thurkle. Select option 1 to deliver some items. Yes, I'm sure. Oh my god, the empty sack. Are you serious? Well, anyway, let's go to any bank and prepare for round 2. For inventory number two, let's deposit everything, let's grab some coins. Once again, 2000 GP should probably be enough, don't bring too many coins that you're not willing to drop. For inventory space, a weapon to kill a unicorn, as well as a pestle and mortar, and then maybe one stamina potion of four doses should be enough. Next, we just need some teleports, one teleport to the dual arena, one teleport to Port Cazard, one teleport to Bertho, I'm gonna be using a games necklace, one teleport to Varrock, one teleport to the Grand Tree, I'm gonna be using the glider near the dual arena, one teleport to Shazian, if you don't want to go to Shazian then you can also teleport to the Mind Altar, one teleport to any bank, one teleport to Brimhaven, and then the following teleports depend if you check your list. If you have an archery ticket, then we already did this one. If you have a agility arena ticket, then you will need to bring along a Brimhaven teleport. If it says Castle Wars ticket, then just do minigame or dueling teleport to Castle Wars and play a game. There is also three kind of books. If it says Prift in its history, well, you don't need to bring anything. If the list requires you to get a crumbling tome, then you will need a Barrows teleport. However, if it says slashed or batter book from the elementary workshop, then you will need to have a Sears Village teleport. Once you have all these teleports, the final teleport is one teleport to Lecce to go back through the underground pass and make our way back to Thogol. Also, bring at least one archery ticket if you had that in your list as well as the empty sack. All right, once we're done, I'm gonna start by going to the dual arena and going straight south to the crafting store. At the crafting store, I'm gonna be buying a necklace mold. Necklace mold, then I'm going west. I'm going to the kebab shop and buy a kebab.
Let's trade Ali the kebab seller or Karim the kebab seller. Let's buy kebab for 1 GP and then head south to Shanty Pass. And let's buy 2 bronze bars, a hammer, a Shanty Pass and a rope. Rope, shanty pass, two bronze bars and a hammer. Let's go through the shanty pass and then head west into the Calphite Lair to grab a potato cactus, which is guarded by a multi-combat zone filled with combat 83 Calphite Guardians. Think they're poisonous though, whatever. Let's use the rope on the tunnel entrance, go down and follow this dungeon until we see a room on the western side where there are three potato cactus spawns. If you already did the desert easy diary, then you know where that location is. After we have gathered the potato cactus, I kind of want to go to Port Cazard. Let's use Protect from Lee, hopefully do not get poisoned. Of course I do, but in Port Cazard there is a bank, so I can drink a antidote. All right, here in Port Kazer, let's maybe drink an antidote if you got poisoned, unfortunately. And then let's grab one plank from the plank spawn, then head into the northern room and use one of the anvils and make one, one bronze medium helm. Then let's head into the store the general store just south and trade the shopkeeper and buy one swamp paste and a bronze axe next continue east onto the dock you no longer need your hammer you may drop it then trade the trader crew member and let's buy a lobster pot and a fishing rod where is the lobster pot there we go that is it. Let's now make our way to Berthope. And let's go to Turil, the Slayer Master, to buy a face mask. Did I just make a task? God damn it. And after we have bought the face mask, let's head into the rogue's den, which is below the trapdoor of the inn. And let's trade Martin Twait and buy a lockpick. Here at the bank, we already may deposit our game's necklace or teleportation method to Berthope as well as teleportation method to Port Cazard. And next, let's make our way to Verok for a couple more items. Let's go to into the clothing store. Let's trade Tissilia. Let's buy leather gloves and a white apron. Then go east to the green quest sign. And next to it, they'll find a crate next to Toby. Let's buy crate, buy one rotten potato one rotten tomato next head south and let's pick some red berries which is between the dark wizards and the varak southeastern mine
Well, you should know. You shouldn't be afraid of uh, the Dark Wizards. We have completed Morty's End Part One, which gives twenty thousand HP XP, which is like at least like level thirty HP. So no one should be worried about Dark Wizards anymore. Let's pick some red berries, then go a bit south of the mine and kill one unicorn. Why is in this world the unicorn on the eastern side? Kill a unicorn for its horn. My god, my specs suck balls. Let's pick up the horn and go north. Use a horn on a pestle and mortar to make some dust. We no longer need the pestle and mortar. This can be put back in the bank or dropped. Let's head straight north to the sawmill. Trade the sawmill operator by one iron nail. Next to him, chop one oak lock. Then we no longer need the bronze axe. Drop it. And now I'm going to the ground tree to buy 10 potatoes. You could also go to uh, a potato field like in Lumbridge and pick the potatoes and put them into an empty sack yourself. But I'm just going to a store and buy my potatoes. And I think the closest one to a teleport would be the Grand Tree one. Now my inventory is quite cluttered, so I'm just going to be opening the shop interface five times and buy two at a time. That's the wrong one. Where is... That's probably Hudo, right? Yes, at Hudo's. Ten potatoes bought from Hudo. Next, I'm going to Shazian, the Shazian graveyard, exiting west to get a skull near the engine sign just west of the graveyard. If you don't want to go to Shazian, since you don't have the teleport unlocked, then you could also teleport to the mine altar, which is located north of Falador, and just cross the wilderness ditch, and it'll find like three skulls. Once you have the skull, let's teleport to any bank to prepare for the final two items. And therefore, we will need to check our item list. It should have a kind of ticket. Archery ticket, I already showed you how to do that. If it says that you will need an agility ticket, then make your way to Brimhaven, go to the northeastern building, pay the NPC with the parrot 200 GP to enter the Brimhaven agility arena, and in here, tag two flashing dispensers, and that will allow you to get one Agility Arena ticket. If it says Castle Wars ticket, you simply need to teleport to Castle Wars, join a Castle Wars world, and play a Castle Wars game. Doesn't matter if you win, draw, or lose, you will get at least three, two, or one tickets. And there are also three kind of bugs. If you have the Crumbling Tome, then you will need to teleport to Barrows. And here at Barrows, next to the teleport spot, there is a Shed Shack looking thing. And in that, there is the Crumbling Tome. If it says you will need the Slashed Book, you will need to go to Sears Village. Go to the quest start of Elemental Workshop, just south of the bank. And search that bookcase to get your Slashed or Battered Book. Now for me, I need the Priftiness History, which is just in Lecha, so I will need to go there anyway. Where the fuck can I get flax now? Alright, once you have your ticket and your book, except Priftiness book, let's make our way to Priftiness. Search the bookcase near Erenwine to get the history of uh, Priftiness book. Let's go to the bank and pick up some flax just south of the bank. 
Then let's go to the bank and prepare to go back into the underground pass and deliver the final items to Thurgle. Okay, with this full inventory full of junk, what we will need is, well, 750 coins if you want to recharge your crystal teleport seed. If you already have another one from killing elves here, then you don't need this inventory space. Then you'll also need your newly made crystal. Since I fucked up with my flax, I'm gonna drink a stamina potion. I'm also gonna drink an antidote. And I'm gonna bring instead a pure essence. Just one, just to complete the Ardoin Heart Diary task. But that's only needed if you want to complete that task and have at least 765 runecrafting. Once you have all your items, be sure to have brought your newly made crystal, as well as a teleport crystal seed, with or without charges, and let's exit Lecha. First, I'm going to recharge my crystal teleport. Hopefully, Elenet is here. Thank goodness. Thank Saren. She's here. Yes, recharge it, please. 600 coins this time. Already re let her recharge it. Drop the remaining coins. And let's go north. Crossing the dense forest. No, first we need to cross a tripwire. Then go straight south. Are you fucking serious? What happened? Then go straight south. I just got hit 30 damage because what the fuck happened even. Cross the leaf strap and on your minimap you'll find a red dot. That is a white berry. Go to the western side and there should find, I think, a stick strap. Or can we just go in there? No, it's even worse with a tripwire. Step over the tripwire and pick up the white berries. This should be my entire list, else I'm going to cry. Step over the tripwire again and let's go back the way we came. Crossing the leaf strap, then go a bit north, crossing dense forest. Then jumping the leaves just a bit north, click on the tile closest to your character, and then make your way back into the underground pass. And once again, go to the bridges and either, if you have less than like 60 agility, try to fail the jump on purpose, else just successfully jump the northern six gaps in the bridge and use the northwestern staircase. And from there, run or walk south back to Thurgol to basically complete our quest. Last time I did this was on an ultimate Iron Man, and honestly, the puzzle, the light puzzle, took me like half an hour, 30, 40 minutes. But the item gathering on an ultimate Iron Man, also refusing to do death storage, so my inventory was like half cluttered, took me like three times as long. No, no, that's, that's exaggerated. That's like twice as long. It took me over an hour just to gather all of these items. Of course, I ran out of energy. Where's my ring of endurance?
No. The Book of the Dead. Why is this here? Oh, no. Oh, no. The Book of the Dead is here. No, 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 no. Please complete the quest. Do I have the book? I have the book. I have the ticket. Yes! You only need 49? <laughs> yes! I have the Death Talisman. Oh my god. With our Death Talisman, let's complete this quest. Use it on the Mysterious Runes. If you've brought a Pure Essence with 65 Runecraft, let's craft rune. To complete a Heart Diary task, then also use your newly made crystal on the altar. And let's exit. Let's go through the light barrier, head east, rotate the mirror so you're able to exit through the eastern light door. Go up, then go up north, then go east. Just like at the start of the quest, go east, go to the dark crystal just a bit south. Use the newly made crystal on the dark crystal to replace it and let's teleport to Lecce to complete our quest. Let's talk to Arinwine and congratulations, you have completed Morning's End Part 2. You are awarded with 60,000 agility experience, access to the Death Altar, which you can use via Abyss Runecrafting and Guardians of the Rift, access to Dark Beasts and their Slayer tasks, if you have 90 or higher Slayer, access into the Temple of Light, but after the quest, it requires the crystal trinket in your inventory to be able to regain access into the Temple of Light. If you do not wish to ever enter the Temple of Light again, you may simply drop it or destroy it. Going to the Death Altar does not require this trinket in your inventory. So if you're doing Guardians of the Rift or Abyss Runecrafting, you are free to just destroy this trinket. And finally, you're now also able to receive Death Talismans from the Guardians of the Rift Rewards Guardian, as well as you're now able to spend your reward points on Death Talismans, if you want to. And lastly, you have now also completed a quest requirement for Song of the Elves. And this was my guide, how to complete Morning's End Part 2. Hopefully it has helped. Subscribe, rate, and comment. Okay, thanks, bye.